Alrighty now, and time to find you a place. Will you stay for me? Close enough. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Aquarium Vault. Justin here from H2O Plants. And today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the project that I've been working on for the last three months, putting together this 15 foot aquarium rack that houses eight 40 gallon breeders for a total of 320 gallons. So stay tuned and you will soon find out what this is all about. I want to take a brief overview of how the tank works because I know there are a lot of people that want to know. So basically the pump there flows through this CO2 reactor here and then that CO2 reactor dissolves CO2 that's called a Greg Ricks reactor. We'll go more into depth on this whole system in a future video. But basically then it flows up another pipe and it comes up out of the top here and into the tank. These will eventually be spray painted black. I just wanted to get these all set up. And then there's an overflow system here with a 1200 gallon rated dual bulkhead overflow that allows 1200 gallons per hour to flow and it will also or well it actually also has lava rock inside there and that's the only place that I can actually put uh, any sort of filtration media is inside that overflow so that's there to basically help filter the tank and that's the only filtration that it has outside of a filter sock that is on the main output. The secondary pipe is there for emergencies, just in case the first pipe gets clogged for whatever reason, it will overflow into the second one and allow it to drain. So let's go into what's in each tank and kind of uh, tell you what is going to be here in the future and, and the ideas for the future, because this is only temporary how this is all set up. In the future, this will evolve into a much different setup. So right now, the top tank here is for a lot of plants. We have a lot of plants being held here. Uh, a lot of crypts, these are actually, well, those aren't crypts, these are the crypts. These are some crypts that are going into this month's plant pack. If you're not familiar with plant pack, it's a monthly subscription box service that I'm delivering plants to your door every month, uh, random assortment or sometimes themed. And uh, yeah, so those are the crypts right now. And you can see there's a little algae on those, but those will disappear because those are relatively new in the tank. Uh, that is most common for a lot of crypts and swords to get some sort of hair algae on them, but it will disappear in a matter of days pretty much. I'm also going to go get some snails and possibly some shrimp or some other type of fish that will eat it just to get rid of it quickly because it is a, it is a common thing with new crypts and new, new sword plants to happen. So outside of that, we have some Critum calamistratum, new type of plant that I've been stocking on the website. A lot of people have been asking for it. Uh, I got one that ain't looking too hot there, but the rest look pretty good. Next up is Crypt Bal Balisse or Balinace. Um, this is a beautiful plant. It has these textured leaves. Very wonderful plant. It can get rather large as you can see. <laughs> these were actually, uh, I didn't think they were going to be this big. So they were a lot, lot bigger than I was anticipating. This is some, uh, a new, um, what are these? These are Atlantisburg swords. They have a reddish tinge to their leaf as you can see. Let's see if we can get a side view. So you can see here reddish yellow and the leaves have these uh, dark red veins that run through them pretty much, as you can see here. And a uh, very beautiful sword plant if you're looking for a different type of sword that's new to the website. Outside of that, also in this tank, we have some dwarf baby tears on a mat that actually uh, took a hit because there was no CO2 in this tank for a couple days. I had no place else to put these and they had to go in here. So I lost a lot of it, but it is regrowing. As you can see, they've stabilized and they are regrowing. I thought I actually lost uh, that one particularly back there, but it's already got new growth. I don't think I'm gonna see any new growth on this. I see a little green, but I don't know if that's gonna actually uh, come back. I may just wind up tossing that one, but we'll see. Uh, also, we have here some moss that I got from some tissue culture cups that I ordered. I wanted to grow them out so I can actually see what they look like. And this is uh, stringy moss. I got some Christmas moss down here because I had Christmas moss, but I got mixed up with everything else. And then this is some pearl moss. Uh, they've actually transitioned quite good here. You can see. This has only been, I think, maybe a week or two, and you can see it's already got beautiful new submerged growth. Typically with moss, when you get it from a tissue culture, it'll go from this brown stuff to now looking green, which is good and healthy. So that's this top tank here. A uh, couple different types of species of plants. I'm not gonna disclose what type of crypt this is because I don't want to spoil it. All right, so let's look at what's in this tank. This is some Anubis Bartari, some Anubis Furziri, 
These are some more crypts that are going in the plant pack. We got some Blixa just floating here because I have no place for it. And uh, thing to note, this tank has no substrate at the moment. Eventually all of the tanks will have substrate, just right now. Uh, substrate is quite expensive. I'm doing, I think I need to do four more tanks at uh, $80 each so it adds up. So I'm not spending that yet because most of the plants can do fine without substrate that I have. So that's what we're doing here. We got some glo Glossostigma, great carpeting plant. It does need a little CO2, but overall, a uh, good carpeting plant. Then we got some dwarf hair grass. These are all on mats, so the same type of mats that you saw in the top tank with the dwarf baby tears. Same sort of thing, mats of it. And on top of the tank, we have some red root floaters growing out, which are these beautiful plants right here. These actually get a red root, hence the name, and they look very wonderful. And then also some pennywort. Pennywort can be acted as both a stem plant or a floating plant. I'm just letting it float here. And uh, that's just because, I, in my opinion, it doesn't work well as a stem plant. I would just leave it as a floating plant. Great for ponds or uh, any sort of tank that you want to have some uh, nice uh, light cover, I guess, to prevent light from hitting your bottom, the bottom of the tanks. All right, so next up is this tank. And what do we have in this tank? Well, pretty much a couple different plants. We have some Anubis Barberi round leaf. We also have some Anubis coffee folia. There is some St. Elmo's Fire Sword, which looks absolutely amazing. I post a picture up on Instagram of this plant. If you want to check us out on Instagram, you can uh, take a look at what it looks like in its full, full beauty. But it's absolutely wonderful. It doesn't stay rooted, as you can see, because we have no substrate. And it is very buoyant, so we definitely need to put this in some substrate, but we don't have any in this particular tank. So, as well as those, we also have some Java Moss mats. These are quite nice, they're three by five inches. Same thing as the Dwarf Baby Tears and the other mats. Then we have some Monte Carlo, great carpeting plant. Um, relatively easy if you were looking for something that spreads out. It's a type of Baby Tears, but uh, much easier than, uh, than Dwarf Baby Tears. Doesn't typically need a whole lot of CO2, can almost probably get by on using Flourish XL. But a uh, very good carpeting plant indeed to use. Next up is the bottom tank, and I gotta try and not spoil something, so I'm gonna cover up a name here. But basically we got some, these are new to the website as well. These are some uh, leopard Italian bell, and basically they get stripes in their leaves. They're a little hard to see, but you can kind of see the, the stripe there. And a very wonderful vowel plant. Vowels are great for backgrounds. We're actually gonna do a spotlight on all the vowels on our next video. This week, I, I'm actually feeling a little under the weather. And that's why we're doing this video because uh, to sit there and do a species video is quite tough. So let's get on to the rest of the plants here. We have Amazon Compacta. Stay short compared to regular Amazon swords, which can get rather tall. Beautiful uh, sword plant. We also have some moss on ledges here. These are actually mystery mosses. I'm thinking about selling these uh, just as mystery moss. And you know, in maybe java moss, weaving moss, or Christmas moss, I'm not sure yet. Also over here, we have a stem plant that we're allowing to transition here, because I want to see what it's like before I sell it. And that is uh, Pogostamon Gaii. And it, it's actually kind of cool looking. I'm waiting, it's been in here a couple weeks. I still want to give it some more time to really see what it looks like before I throw it up on the website. Next up is some dwarf sedge. Typical staple of uh, what we had. We just had extra so it went in this tank. We also got some Anubis here, Anubis narrow leaf. Uh, Anubis nana and narrow leaf, a very beautiful plant. Uh, it has narrow leaves and nana. And then there is a crypt, but the crypts are hidden. Well, you can see some of them. Those are some more crypts that are going in the plant pack box. So that is this tank. Oh, there's also some Blixa floating on top here. Some more Blixa. So next up is the next top tank. And what we have here is <laughs> quite a mixture of plants. So behind there are some high grows that I took out of one of the other grow tanks because they get too big too quick for a lot of the other slower growing plants that I have. So I wanted to give them their own space. They are unfortunately melting back a lot. So we may have to order more that transition better, but there is some high growth cherry leaf, which I'm sure will do good because that's a very sturdy plant. There's also some Ludwigias. You can see the color here and they're actually closed up a bit because I turned on the light too early. And uh, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really like that all that much. Also in here we have some uh, Blixa uh, uh, but Butteri? Or, um, oh no, no, Alturi, Alturi or something like that. That's that Blixa. I forgot the exact pronunciation. Pronunciation, I can't talk today, excuse me. So that's some Bacopa Monary. A lot of people have been asking for Bacopa Monary. I, I lost mine when we moved, I haven't ordered it again, so now I have it transitioning. 
but it will be a while before that's available because it's extremely slow growing. We also have some broadleaf coco stamen with uh, stellatus, which I'm waiting for it to transition as well. This is not its final form. Here we have some rare crypts, some uh, cor cordata that I got from a hobbyist. We have a newcomer octopus plant, really cool looking plant. It looks similar to Val, but it isn't Val, so it's really cool. We also have a bunch of potted boosts. This is actually homegrown in the United States, so if you are looking for boosts, there's a lot of controversy against it because of most of it's wild collected, but this is gr green wavy. It's been cultivated in the United States. Absolutely stunning plant. I'm actually probably going to take a couple for my other tank because I want to use some of it. Then over here we have a pile of mosses that are actually going to need to get uh, re packed here or re-secured re because I have the ledges that came in. This was just a temporary fix because I didn't have any ledges for these. So now I have the ledges, so these are going to go on ledges and they will be scattered throughout all the tanks. That's it for this tank pretty much. Oh, behind there there's also some, there's a Pogo Stamen octopus plant, similar, well not similar to this, but similar names. And uh, it's going to be really cool looking, but it's hidden right now. So let's take a look at the bottom tank here. We have some more Monte Carlo in uh, pots here. So if you didn't want a full mat, you can get a potted variation. Um, there is some Java Fern Lace, absolutely beautiful. Some Red Flame Swords, these are smaller than the St. Elmo's Fire Swords, but if you have a small tank, these get kind of big. So I want to recommend them, they just, they're just they on the smaller size compared to the St. Elmo's Fire. They're about triple the size of the uh, St. Elmo's Fire. Also in here we have some Anubis Heterofolia, which is a huge Anubis that we sell on the website. Uh, we also have some dwarf aquarium lilies, and I apologize for the glass being a little dirty here. I didn't even see this beforehand, so some uh, some dwarf aquarium lilies there. Some more Anubis. Uh, this is Anubis, I think Nana or Barteri. I forget which one's in here. I got I got to double check what we did. And then also some Crenitionums, which I had a bunch on the website, but they they weren't doing too well in my in my tank, so I decreased it to only a couple because some are doing alright, but a lot of them didn't fare well, so I'm waiting for them to kind of uh, fix themselves, because they're a very temperamental plant. So uh, a couple of people ordered them, I hope you guys are having better success with them than I am, <laughs> because they are very expensive and I, it's a huge money loss on those. So let's go to the next setup. So this is the last tank in the row of tanks that we have here. As you can see, a brief overview. We already covered those six. This tank has been actually set up for a couple weeks now. Um, it was the first one we got up. Down here we have just a bunch of plants. We have some rosette swords. We also have some Kleiner bars, some regular Amazon swords. Uh, the Kleiner bar is actually that red type there. You can see it's actually got wonderful red leaves. Also in here we do have some Apongitons like Madagascar Lace. There's a leaf of Madagascar Lace there. Uh, this tank is just absolutely packed full. We have to go through here and kind of uh, weed out what's in here and figure out what we have. Uh, we also have some Anubis Nana Petite. Some more Anubis over there. That's a, a Vazelli. Gets a red rhizome. We also have a Apongitons Bovinianus which is right there. That green leaf you can see and some more leaves over there. And yeah, so this tank has a, a ton of stuff in it. We have to we have to get in here and definitely clean it out. It's just we've been uh, busy getting everything else done. So that's that's gonna be this week's project going through these tanks. Same thing with this tank. We have a lot of stuff in here. It definitely needs to be gone through. We have a lot of four leaf clover, which actually has almost nearly transitioned entirely. As you can see here, we went over this plant in a last uh, plant profile video. And you can see here, all of this is kind of melting away, but you have all this new growth, and that's what you're really looking for. And you have some more Crips behind there, some uh, Crip One Diddy Brown, Crip One Diddy Green, some Crypt uh, Balanese, more of it, Crypt Parva, small Crypt plant, and this glass is also equally wet. I have, or it's got a bunch of uh, water stains on it, I gotta clean up. And yeah, some other Crips like Crypt Lutea, Crypt uh, Lucian. There's also some stem plants in here, which I didn't have any other place to put. So we got some Alternia Renaki, which is the red one. Very good, easy beginner red plant. Actually stays red almost in any situation. We also have some Kabamba growing there. Some Stargani Purple, which I don't even know where to put this at this point. Some uh, some regular baby tears, some more dwarf baby tears. It, it's a mess. This tank is an absolute mess. So is that bottom tank. We really have to clean those out. But I did want to show what we have set up here with those so far 
and uh, really give you guys an overview of what's going on here. In this particular tank, this was hard pipe, if some of you may ask me, because those are all soft pipe or flexible pipe. That was actually way easier to do than the hard pipe. The problem though is you have to really make sure your connections are good on that. Uh, well, same thing with that, but your connections really have to be sealed tightly when you bend the flexible PVC, because I actually had some issues. I had to redo a couple connections. But that's about it, guys, on this. And that's the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for checking it out. As always, hit that like button and subscribe here if you're new, as well as hitting the notification bell so you're notified anytime we upload a new video. Also, on last week's video, the rare moss video, I asked what type of moss you really enjoyed. And Melissa Bears, you are the winner. You win the $20 gift certificate to the store. Go down into our channel and send us a private message to claim that. So this week's video, the question is simply, what did you think of the racks or what would you do differently? And if you have any suggestions or anything that you would like to see uh, more in detail of the rack, let me know and I'll definitely get into it. Keep in mind, this is one out of two that we have to build or possibly order. The second one, I'm not sure this took me so long, I don't know what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to build it or order a pre-made rack from somebody. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.